Hey everybody, welcome back. Uh, today we have a very special review for you. This is uh, likely an exclusive, if not one of the first reviews that you will be able to watch. And of course, we are talking about Kanto's brand new premium powered monitor, the Tuck. Now, if you've watched this channel in the past, you know that I am a big fan of Kanto's uh, powered monitors. I make the YU6s my reference monitors here in my office. And I, I think those speakers are great because I think for the price point, the YU6s and the YU line on a whole represents absolutely everything the budding enthusiast audiophile and even someone who maybe has been into this hobby for a long time i do think that yu line of loudspeakers especially the yu6 represents in a tremendous value and likely all that any enthusiast really needs what i also really really like about the yu line in canto in general is that they give you basically the rudimentary um, elements to a system all included in each loudspeaker. And what I mean by that is their speakers have inputs, both digital and analog, as well as phono, meaning you can connect things like a turntable or a digital source, a computer, um, to them physically and control them all via a remote control. So it really negates the need for things like AV receivers, stereo receivers, integrated amps, and things of that nature. And that is a really, really big deal because powered speakers, as we've discussed in this series before and on this channel, powered speakers are able to give you more for less without having to really sacrifice sound quality. Now, the new trend, in my opinion, in powered speakers, now that the affordable market has largely been, I don't want to say saturated or oversaturated, but definitely established, is now how much more upmarket can the sound get? And what I mean by upmarket is, is it possible to make a loudspeaker that appeals to those with discerning tastes. And that is kind of where the tuck comes into play. You know that I'm into powered speakers and you know lately I have been talking about that powered speaker up market thing and we recently reviewed Bowers and Wilkins Formation Duos which are decidedly upmarket great sounding loudspeakers that have, well, they have some limitations but all in all where sound is concerned. They are some of the finer loudspeakers on the market today. So this is where the tuck comes in because it's not formation duo. It's not super esoteric high end with its own esoteric ecosystem. The tuck still subscribes to the Canto mentality, which is you should be able to enjoy whatever source component you have, whether it's old or new or wireless or wired. And that's what makes it great. But the Tuck differ from the YU line in the sense that, well, yeah, they cost more at almost $800 a pair, $799 to be exact, but they try and offer more in terms of sonic performance that the YU line may have had to curb in order to fit a certain budgetary constraint. So are the Tux Cantos cost no object shot across the bow for those interested in powered monitors? Well, yes, it is. And that is what it's been designed to do. And whether or not you like the Tuck is gonna boil down to really two very simple questions. Do you like an AMT tweeter, one? And two, how do you feel about aluminum? One of the most exciting things about the new Tuck opposed to the YU6 is the fact that I no longer have to choose between my analog sources because the YU6s had a pair of analog inputs that were switchable between just standard line level RCA and phono stage. The Tuck has two sets of analog inputs and one is a dedicated phono stage while the other is an analog RCA style or line level input and that is awesome absolutely awesome because when I would use the YU6s outside in my living room system connected to my television I couldn't also have my turntable connected so that meant that when I wanted to listen to records I would have to disconnect some things 
but when I wanted to watch TV and use the YU6s more or less as a soundbar solution, I would have to disconnect the turntable and connect some other things. And this is a small price to pay in a first world problem, but the Tuck eliminate that altogether because I now have a dedicated phono stage for my turntable, as well as a dedicated pair of analog inputs if I wanted to use them connected to another device. Uh, in my instance, a television. Now, because I now have two dedicated inputs, RCA style, I did lose one digital input compared to the YU6. Yes, the Tuck only has a singular digital input. Uh, but that's not a really big deal for me. I actually rarely connected anything to my YU6s optically except to test it to make sure that it worked. Uh, instead opting for the um, either Bluetooth or wireless connectivity or even the USB connection of which the Tuck has all of that. So that's fantastic. I would rather have two RCA or analog style inputs in the tuck than be limited to one with a switch that I had in the YU6. The other nice thing about the tuck is that the tuck, unlike the YU6 line or the YUs in general, has its own dedicated headphone connection and headphone amp internal, which is awesome because a lot of people may use the tuck for their desktop or near field system, in which case that puts the headphone jack, well, first of all, it gives you one, but second, it puts it kind of within arm's reach and it allows you to interface using headphones with the tuck very, very simply, which is kind of nice. And it also means that you can connect the tuck to your, say your computer or laptop via the USB to enjoy very high res audio indeed. And then when you need to go silent or whatnot, you can plug that headphone right into the headphone jack and utilize it that way and have the benefit of having a dedicated headphone amp inside the tuck, which is something the YU6s simply did not offer you. And while we're talking about the front of the unit, the whole input selection option and control dial volume dial is greatly, greatly improved with the tuck compared to the YU. And now with the tuck, all of the input lights are readable and very clearly defined, taking the guesswork completely out of it. And the control knob, the little volume input selector is gnarled, very, very tactile, much more, uh, I guess I can say a more positive experience as over the all plastic sort of constantly rotating knob that was on the YU. Which brings us to the drivers. The biggest difference in, in every way that the tucks have over the YU line. And I, and I mean the biggest difference because not only are the materials more esoteric, a little bit more higher end, but they dramatically affect the sound of the tuck. And as a result, like I said earlier in this review, it really is going to come down whether or not these speakers are for you to do you like an AMT tweeter and do you like aluminum drivers? The Tuck has an AMT tweeter, which are very much all the rage these days. And then a lot of other companies, Adam Audio to Martin Logan, use an AMT tweeter. The nice thing is here is that, well, unlike higher end models, you're not going to pay a huge fortune to enjoy the sound of an AMT tweeter. Now, what does an AMT tweeter give you over, say, the silk dome or fabric dome or standard aluminum dome tweeter that you may find in other speakers, including the lesser YU line. Well, in a nutshell, if you are someone that values detail above all else and you want to know, you want to leave nothing to chance, you want to make sure that when you listen to a properly recorded track that you are hearing absolutely all of the high frequency information that that recording artist, producer, or mixer brought to bear, then the AMT tweeter is going to be for you because these are detail monsters. These are things that are going to reveal things in a mix. These are, these are tweeters that are not going to shy away one iota from making sure that you hear absolutely everything. And I mean everything. So if a recording is beautifully recorded, it's going to sound beautiful, at least high frequencies. They're going to sound beautiful through a pair of tucks. No questions asked. It's going to sound amazing. But if you like, if it's a recording that isn't recorded just so, and isn't the most 
perfect example of recording quality. Let's say it's even a lesser compressed digital recording, or it's a noisy LP transfer or whatever, whatever may foil this particular recording. If it's just not the master tape perfect thing that you envision, well, the AMT tweeter in the tuck is going to let you know. And so in that way, it is not forgiving. Now, from a content creator standpoint, from a sound mixer standpoint, from someone who wants to make sure that what I'm putting out there into the world is of the utmost quality, I want a tweeter that doesn't pull its punches. I do. And in that respect, when I brought the tux into my studio or into my office here for mixing purposes, I was realizing that I was letting a lot of, say, noise or background sounds or high frequency information that previously went a little bit smoothed over or unnoticed through the YU line, I, I now was hearing. I now was hearing and I now realized, oh my God, I've got to EQ that out or I have got to fix what I'm doing from a content creation standpoint because the tucks were now exposing me to things in my mix that were otherwise or went otherwise undetected with my other speakers. So in that respect, as a tool, as a creative tool, as a mixing tool, the tucks are amazing. And that tweeter, that AMT tweeter is amazing and it is an asset to have. So if you are a listener, that really revels in knowing that you're hearing everything and leaving nothing to chance, then these are going to be a speaker from the, from the high frequency performance. These are going to be a loudspeaker that you are likely going to just revel in. But give them anything less than perfection and they can be brittle, they can be harsh, and at high volumes, they can even become fatiguing. So you need to know where your musical tastes lie. You need to know where your collection lies. You know, if you're, if you're enjoying a Spotify free account, this may be the time to upgrade to premium. Or if you don't have the title premium that gives you master recording quality, this may be the time to upgrade before buying the tux. Or buy the tux and then upgrade so that you know you stand a chance at hearing these at their absolute best. As for the mid-range and the bass, well, it comes down to, again, do you like the sound of aluminum drivers? And the reason I say that is because aluminum drivers, in my experience, tend to be incredibly dynamic and very, very punchy and a little bit forward. It makes for a very lively, like I said, lithe or lighter performance that favors accuracy, dynamics, and impact more than it does necessarily absolute weight. And, that's, and that bears out kind of in its bass response because while it does have a shocking level of bass and that it goes down to about 50 hertz, um, this is a ported design and so that port does help get the bass performance down there, but it, it, it's a little bit quicker in the upper mid bass and obviously in the treble compared to the low end, which can get a bit rumbly. But, but, like the YU, the Tuck has a subwoofer output. And when you use it, it, it engages a crossover at 80 hertz, which means adding a subwoofer to the Tuck, which is not mandatory, but adding a subwoofer to the Tuck allows the Tuck speakers themselves to operate where they are most comfortable and it allows the subwoofer to take over the bass and everybody's happy. And it also means that you can potentially put the subwoofer where the bass is going to sound best in your room while leaving the mains where they sound best in theirs. And this is why I always advocate when possible for a 2.1 channel setup over a straight up two channel setup. Because sometimes where your main speakers sound their best is not where the bass sounds its best but having an outboard subwoofer with a long enough cable and a subwoofer output like the Tuck means you can put the bass where it works best, you can put the speakers where they work best, and when you have that marriage done perfectly, this is an incredibly, incredibly great package indeed. 
As far as the other elements of the tux sound, well, they sound stage like a mother effer. These things have a very, very nice sound stage, a very wide, very uh, detailed and nuanced sound stage. And if you get the speaker placement just right, uh, these speakers orally disappear with the best of them. And that is amazing because that means they have a really, really nice wide dispersion characteristic to them. Uh, center center um, imaging is rock solid. I thought that that was one of the hallmark strengths of the YU, and I do actually think that it, is ha it has improved here with the Tuck. I do think that the Tuck has a bit more center focus, obviously aided by the added detail and texture that that AMT tweeter can dish out. And in near field listening, it's fantastic. It's absolutely fantastic. This is a very, very critical audiophile grade monitor in the near field and in, 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 in the medium and non near field. But if you're looking to do things on a critical level, on a mastering level, this is definitely a loudspeaker that can step into that role. And at 800, I'm sorry, $799 a pair, it makes it one of the more affordable reference level type of monitors in that respect for someone that may do some home recording or home demos or things of that nature. It's definitely, definitely worth a look. The only other issue that I really have with these speakers, because I do find them to operate much in the same way as the YU line, they are clearly a step up sonically, provided you feed them the right material. But I didn't care for the remote. And I know that Kanto talks about the updated remote, and I think that the remote is a step backwards. Largely because I don't know why it's two colors. Um, that I do not understand. It doesn't feel as well built. But the biggest drawback to the remote was the fact that they got rid of the dedicated input buttons. I have dedicated input lights, but they got rid of my dedicated input buttons. So now I'm just, I have to hit until the right light turns on. And that just seems so weird. Like, why, why'd you do that? I don't get it, but they did. And I gotta say, I don't like the remote at all. Thankfully, where these uh, tucks have resided on my desk for the bulk of the uh, maybe one month that I've now lived with them. Um, I haven't had to use the remote too much, but in my living room, when I did have to use the remote, when I did enjoy them with my turntable, when I did enjoy them as a soundbar alternative, I have to say, thankfully, I didn't have to switch inputs that much, but the remote kind of sucked. I mean, it was functional, it was functional, it worked, and it wasn't that directional, and it does do what it needs to do, and I do appreciate a lot of the other functionality that it provides, but on a whole, I thought the remote that came with the YU was just better. So, I don't know why they changed it. But as it sits, they are fantastic sounding. If you, if you, if you fancy yourself a discerning uh, listener, and you are looking for an accurate, powered monitor. Well, the Tux are definitely something to take a look at. And of course, they come in two flavors, black or white. You're not going to get any crazy reds or things like that this time around. And, and they have magnetic grills. The YU line, grillless. So they gave you all the colors, you know, red, blues, uh, bamboos, whites, blacks, gloss, but no grills. The tucks come in two matte colors, matte finishes, white and black, and they have magnetic grills. But the grills are a nice touch if you're looking to kind of dress the speaker up just a little bit. So, yeah. So yeah, that is my review of Kanto's brand new premium powered monitor, the Tuck, and at $7.99 a pair, available either right now or very shortly after this uh, review goes live. Um, I think they're fantastic. I think they're fantastic. They do have, they do come with a caveat. They do come with an asterisk and that you must feed them the absolute best possible recordings. Otherwise you do run the risk of them being on the less forgiving side, shall we say. But if you are an audiophile with a discerning ear and a discerning taste, in your music and the type of source material you like to listen to, well, then these are going to be very discerning loudspeakers for you to enjoy. So that's my review, everybody. Tell me what you think. I know you will in the comments below. Um, I really do thank you guys so much for watching all of these. Please do like and subscribe and ring the bell. I know quite a few of you are watching each and every time, 
but you have not yet subscribed, so please do subscribe. It does help me out more than you do realize in that it helps spread the word about this channel. Your subscriptions do help this channel grow and do help to spread the word and bring new people into this hobby. So do me a huge favor. If you liked this video, please do like and subscribe. And remember, until the next video, the next review, the only person who has to like your system is you. So happy listening. Thanks for watching. We'll catch you on the next one.